have cancer. I ain't talking about physical cancer either. I'm talking about sinful cancer. They might have committed adultery. They may be watch wrong kind of movies. Maybe they go to the movies. I don't know. Maybe they drink. Maybe they curse. Maybe they drink or smoke. They're diseased with sin. Are we not all? It says in verse 4, the disease have you not strengthened. You haven't strengthened them. Instead, you beat them up. But watch what God says. Neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. All this is caring for the sheep. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. The one who drove them away, the shepherds. Neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force, with force, and with cruelty have you ruled them. Sound like First Peter chapter 5, verse 4. Or verse 3. His lords. Look at verse 5. And they were scattered. Why? Because there is no shepherd. No shepherd. Just a hireling is what they are. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. See, when the sheep are scattered because we beat them up, because we treated them with cruelty, and treated them with an iron fist, it scatters the sheep. And they're eaten alive by the world. Their testimony is ruined. And they live for Satan the rest of their born days. They're going to get to heaven one day. I wonder how, you know, the Bible tells us in Hebrews, the last chapter, that me as a pastor, I'll give an answer for people, members of my church. But I wonder how many Christians are going to stand and give a, a witness against their pastor. I wonder if that won't take place as well. Because they're going to say, I was scattered. I was treated cruelly. I wasn't healed. Nobody offered me no help. Nobody bound up my wounds. Instead, I was treated with an iron fist. I've heard people say, this is a bully pulpit. This is not a bully pulpit. I don't like that saying. I don't like it at all. I know people have said it. They're good people. I don't like it. This is not a bully pulpit. It says, and they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered, Jesus said, through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. You know what? The USA, in our country, there's, I guarantee you, there's millions of Christians that are just scattered. They're scattered because they've been beat up by preachers. They've been treated cruelty. They were pushed and said, you got to do this or get out. So they got out. You got to wear something or get out. You got you to wear a dress to church or you can't come to this church. Where does it say that in the Bible? It says a woman should be modest. I know what it says. But where does it say you can't let them in the house of God? Tell me that. Everybody's not where you are. You know what? The Lord's a whole lot more patient with his sheep than we are. I'm going to say that again. The Lord is a whole lot more patient with his sheep, they're his sheep, than we are with each other. We're not the shepherd. He's the shepherd. He's the one that's patient and kind and loving. And so many times we're cruel and mean. Rule with an iron fist. This is a bully pulpit. There's something totally different with being a bully. Bully is not a good thing. Anybody, you know any good... Give me one example, anybody, of a good example of being a bully. I don't know, Benny. I don't like that saying about this is a bully pulpit. It's not a bully pulpit. Right. There's a difference in being a bully and being bold and courageous and standing for truth. Paul and Silas and the apostles, they were bold for Jesus. It made no difference if they were in prison. Daniel, it made no difference if he was facing lions. It made no difference about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They was facing the fiery furnace. They were bold. They said, listen, they respected the, the, the king. They said, we respect you, but we're not going to bow. And that was bold. That wasn't being bully and being mean and hateful. They were saying, we're going to be bold. We're not going to bow. God can save us if he wants to. He can. But either way, we're not going to bow. He was bold and courageous. All three of them boys. 
David, as he stood before Goliath, he was very bold and courageous. He wasn't a bully. He wouldn't go around picking on Goliath. Never do you see a little boy. Can you see uh, Matthew run around trying to beat up a, a, a seven-foot-year-old guy? I'm going to beat you up, boy. <laughs> I'm going to beat you up, boy. <laughs> you know, it's always the big guy beating up the little guy. That's what you get. That's a bully most of the time. That's not what this pulpit's about. That's not what preaching's about. That's not what pastoring is about. Now, I've known a lot of bully preachers in my past, and I can name you some that's still out there today. I think they're bullies. I don't like them. I'll take them down off my website. Or the church's website. I don't think that exemplifies the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ was not a bully. He could have wiped them all out. He could have beat up the Pharisees if he wanted to. He could have had them standing on their head until he comes back if he wanted to. He could do anything he wanted, but he didn't go around bullying people. He certainly had the power and the ability to bully, bully anybody he wanted to. He could have bullied Satan, and he's going to bully him one day. That ain't, I guess, the right word, but he's going to take care of him. And I'll be glad when he does. But that day's coming. It's not today, you know, darling. Not being a little while. Where it's all going to start, which has already started. But the fact is, these verses here describe a shepherd that has not been taking care of the sheep. He's been bullying them. He's been scattering them. He's been doing everything but what the verse says, feed my sheep. Back over in 1 Peter chapter 5. It says, feed the flock of God. We're supposed to feed them individually. Shepherd the sheep individually. That's what he's talking about. We're going to come back to that, and I promise you, in the next week, feed the sheep. The next phrase, it says, the flock of God. Turn over to John 21. John 21. Verse 15. John 21, verse 15. This is after the Lord had rose from the dead. Peter, you know, he had already denied the Lord three times. The number three is always around Peter, everywhere he looked. Here three times the Lord asked Simon a question. It says in verse 15, So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again, the second time Jesus did, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved. Because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Peter, over here, 1 Peter chapter 5, he is now a pastor. He is now a shepherd. And what he's trying to encourage us now is to feed the sheep. And that is to take care of the sheep. Not to feed them spiritually with spiritual food. That comes later. The care for the sheep is the responsibility of the pastor. One of the duties of a pastor is certainly to feed the sheep. As well as protect the sheep. As well as sometimes to discipline the sheep. And so many other things. But the care for the sheep is what Peter is trying to get across here. Not to feed the sheep. But to care for the sheep. That word feed, every time in the New Testament that it is translated, it comes from the same word that the word shepherd comes from and pastor. They're interchangeable. Pastor, shepherd, and feed. Everywhere in the New Testament. It all means the same thing. You could say shepherd the flock of God like I titled the message. You could say pastor the flock of God. That's what it means. It's not talking about 
feeding, preparing messages. And I'll show you that again later. So you just have to take my word for it at this moment. But it says the flock of God. Sixteen times God refers over in Ezekiel chapter 34. Sixteen times, if you look at that whole chapter and you count them, God says, my flock, my sheep, my flock, my flock, my sheep, my sheep, over 16 times in that one chapter. They're not, no. There it is. Okay? That's what Peter was saying. Feed the flock of God. Feed the flock of God. That's my responsibility, to take care of the sheep. They're not mine. I'm the under shepherd. He is the chief shepherd. It says in verse 4. Now, not only that, in closing, I guess what I'll get to is the next phrase, which is among you. Feed the flock of God, which is among you. Now, it's not my responsibility to care for the sheep down in Gaffney, South Carolina, at Brother Little's church. That's not my sheep. It's not my responsibility to care for the sheep over at Brother Myers' church in Asheville. Not my sheep. They're a different fold. Look over, I'll show you this. John chapter 10, verse 16. I'm probably getting ahead of myself. I'll get to you now. John chapter 10, verse 16. The fold is the church. This, this is a good reading here about the sheep and the shepherd and, and so forth. And they'll follow the, sh the voice of the shepherd. And my sheep hear my voice and so forth. Verse 16. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. See, this is called a fold. God calls this the fold. It's called a church. Okay. At this moment, this fold has six members. I'll be honest with you. There's only six members. It's our family and Mr. Reagan. That's the fold of this church. Okay. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Now, Brother Little down there, I don't know how many members he has. I think there's around 50 or 60 members. That's his fold that he's supposed to take care of. Brother Myers has fold over there where he's at, at Bingham Heights. Brother Tom Shook over at Truth, he has people in his fold. But they're all God's sheep. But that's a different fold. Jesus said, another sheep I have which are not of this fold. Didn't say that it wasn't sheep. Didn't say that it wasn't um, his sheep. But it's a different fold. Them also I must bring. When's he going to bring them? And they shall hear my voice, the voice of a trumpet. He's going to call us all together.